Greetings, friends. We are gonna go run some errands and we are going to go and pick up some things I need to do a rehouse on a couple different inverts. I want to show you how to rehouse something that you buy at a show. So we're gonna do jumping spider, tarantula, and a mantis. So let's get into it. We're going to get out into the world and go find some enclosures and some other things that we need to make those houses really cute and fun. And yeah, let's get into it. Come on, let's go. All right, first stop, we're gonna go to Walmart and look at some enclosures. And I also need some other stuff, but we're gonna look at enclosures here and see if we can find anything that we wanna use while we're here, because it'll be easy, but let's go. I really like these because they're really clear and they have good lids on them and they melt pretty good with the soldering iron to put holes in there, just depending on like, you know, what size you need. A lot of people use stuff like that for the jumping spiders. I already have some containers, so I'm not necessarily gonna buy any, but I did wanna show you guys what you could use. I don't really use the glass because it's too hard to put holes in it. I also want to show you these because they're cheap. And these would be good too for a lot of different things. This one and those two are both not glass, which is really nice. That opens up a lot. You could use with those. I'm gonna use this one for the mantis gonna be really cute for it. I already have quite a few containers that are like those ones that I'm gonna use for the other two, but I did end up getting the smaller version of that canister for the Mantis. But let's get out of here. These are so perfect for little terrariums. I'm gonna pick a couple of these out for the ones I have. I do already have some at home, so I have some stuff I can pick from, but I wanna show you guys that you guys can find this stuff here. It's usually by like the garden area. Over in the toy section, there's also like IP based little figures that you can use for the enclosures. These are cute if you're doing like a theme there's also the fake plants at the Dollar Tree. These are fine. I use these all the time. Just depends on what look you're going for. I try to pick the ones that are made of either cloth or plastic and stay away from anything with glitter or anything with these little foam balls. The plastic section at the Dollar Tree is also great. When they have a lot in stock, there are a lot of choices. Again, it just depends on how nice of an enclosure you wanna make and what you want it to look like aesthetically. If aesthetics are not important, these are fantastic to use. These small canisters work great and are very clear. These small delis are great for little inverts or babies. You just have to poke little holes in there. These larger canisters are awesome also. All right, I think I got everything I needed from Dollar Tree and Walmart. I am going to go one more place though. We're gonna go over to um, Joann's or Hobby Lobby or Michael's or one of those. I wanna look at the fake plants that they have. They didn't have a lot of fake plants at the Dollar Tree and I really don't need that many, but I would like like probably one or two really that I can cut up a little bit that I can use. I also want to look and just see if there's anything else there that I might like to add to the enclosure. I am leaning more towards Hobby Lobby because they have miniatures and I think that could be really cute, but it just depends on what theme I want to do. I think for the more cylinder one, I'm going to put something in the middle and that one is for the Mantis. And then for the other two, they're both just regular like square enclosures that have that push down lid. 
And those ones, I'm not, the jumping spider one, I will be attaching things to the wall, but the one for the tarantula, we're not. So I'm not really sure how much more I really need, but selfishly, I just kind of want to stay out a little bit longer. So I'll show you some more stuff that we may or may not get, but I really just want to have some more fun today. So let's go to our next destination. I stop at the day. We're going to go to Hobby Lobby, see what we find here. Why I like to get these here and not other places is because these have like nice metal in them, which just makes them a little bit more sturdy for what we're gonna use them for. So I'm gonna get this one and I'm gonna look and see if there's a couple more. I really don't need that many. I'm only making three enclosures. These are perfect. When I look at these, I just like kind of like to see what the leaves are made out of and if I think that they're going to last in their terrarium. I try to stay away from anything that has like that's like textured like that or when they're like weird and soft like this one looks like it might be soft but it's not like that one would be okay but like this one kind of has a weird coating on it so it might it would probably be okay but I just you know just be mindful of that when you're buying not reptile stuff for a reptile enclosure when you look around in the plant section a lot of the fake greenery on the left would be great for a generic reptile enclosure like crested gecko snake anything like that again just check out what the leaves are made of if you think they will last in the enclosure the vines are also a good choice but shop the sales because these can be kind of expensive these little figurines are super cute inside of enclosures also, the really tiny ones make good additions to jumping spider enclosures because they're nice and small. The miniature section, you can find a lot of cute things to add into enclosures. Just see what it's made of and see if you think it'll last. All right, we're done at Hobby Lobby and now I think we're just gonna head back. I am going to do some like off camera running around and then uh, and then I'll head back. I don't think I need anything else for these enclosures. The rest of the things I need, I already have. I'll show you what I'm gonna use and then give you ideas of where you can find those things if maybe you wanna use the exact same thing that I have and it's not something I showed, but most of it is just very gonna be very like generic setup. I'm not doing anything super elaborate. I want this to be something that a beginner can do, not something that me as a very experienced reptile keeper and invert keeper does. Because the way I am gonna do it for myself is a lot easier. Just, I mean, it's easier for me to do it, I mean. It's not necessarily that it's an easier setup. It's just easier for me to do it because I've been doing it for longer. But anyways, I got everything we needed. Let's go ahead and head back home and get on with the next part of this. All right, I'm home. I got lunch. I am going to have that and then work on my project, which is rehousing these inverts. Well, we're gonna make their houses first and then we'll rehouse them. The houses have to dry and all of that before we can put the bugs right in. So the bugs won't go in tonight. But let's get this stuff inside and go on to the next, uh, the next part of the day. All right, I am going to put some holes in these containers. I will be using one for the mantis, this round one that I have. And then the two back ones, I'm using one for a tarantula and one for a um, drumming spider. I'm actually taping around the container 
to get even holes, I am trying to put a somewhat straight thing around here so that I can put somewhat straight holes into this bin. And I'm gonna be real, that looks pretty straight to me in comparison to what I usually do. And I'm gonna do that one more time. These lines are not straight, but ask me if I care. I don't. I'm doing it for you, not for me. So this needs to be, these holes need to be fairly small just because of the nature of the animal that's going in here. Beautiful. And now we just do this a hundred times. One thing that I want to remind you of is that the soldering iron is very hot. We are using the soldering iron for what it was not intended to be used for. We need to be, you know, mindful when we're working with it. Our first container. I think it looks pretty good. It's pretty straight. I realized I probably could have just done one piece of tape and done the lines around it, but you know what? We did what we did, and this is what we did. I was not sure if I was going to put more holes in it or not, but I really do think that this is plenty of holes. I don't know. I think that it is a little intimidating to rehouse tarantulas if you are a newer keeper. And I don't think that keeping tarantulas is necessarily hard, but I do think that rehousing them can be tricky, especially when we talk about, you know, a bigger tarantula or a more aggressive tarantula, or even if it's just like your first tarantula, it can be a daunting task. So I like to try to make sure that anything that is on my table at least is in a container that it can live in for a while. And I stay on top of the rehouses so that when you buy it, you don't have to rehouse it right away because I know that that process can be a little bit scary. <clears throat> but I'm just putting my second row of holes in for the jumping spider enclosure. The jumping spiders do need a little bit more ventilation in my experience than like a regular tarantula. Uh, they do really well with a good amount of ventilation, especially here in Florida. This is my obligatory Florida, like, you know, I live in Florida, so the humidity is more. Uh, so they do well with more ventilation here because the ambient humidity is high here. If you live somewhere else, obviously pay attention to it. I don't know where you live. I don't know what the humidity is in your house. So do your best. We'll start putting the things inside the enclosure, which we are just going to do with hot glue. It's nothing extraordinary. And then we'll let them dry before we put any inverts inside of them. So I'll let them dry for a few days and then a few days from now, but it won't be a few days for you, but a few days for me. And then you will see them in their new houses. But these are done. Let me unplug this and then we'll go on to our next thing. All right, I have all the things I need on the table in front of me. I'm gonna show you what I have. I'm gonna flip the camera so you can see what I'm doing and we're gonna get into it. The first one I'm gonna start with is the ghost tree spider habitat because it's arguably the easiest one to do. It is not anything where I'm really gonna be attaching anything into the enclosure. This is a true tarantula, so I really, well, I will make these still aesthetically cute, they don't necessarily appreciate things being bolted down. Tarantulas are natural decorators, so they are not something that is just like, they wanna move their stuff around. So if you bolt their stuff to the ground, I will promise you they will find a way. 
They are stronger than you think and they are not a fan of having that stuff stuck down. So we're gonna keep that in mind as we're decorating this enclosure. We're gonna keep it cute, but we're gonna keep it mostly movable for this tarantula to be able to enjoy its house. This is the house that this one is going into. It is in the taller clear one, but it only has, as you can see, it only has holes up at the top. It only really needs that ventilation up at the top. The bottom part will be substrate and um, everything else that the tarantula wants. And I just wanna make sure that the ventilation is in an area where it's not gonna be really obstructed. That way it can get a good amount of ventilation into the enclosure. Remember that these bugs don't breathe air and process air the same way that we do. So while you could not live in here, it can live in here just fine. But let's go into the process of picking out what we want to put into the, into the enclosure. I brought out quite a bit of cork bark, different plants. Some of these I got uh, yesterday at uh, Hobby Lobby. I brought out a mix of substrate for this enclosure. I have some sphagnum if I want to use it, and then we have the enclosure. The first thing that I want to do is get it set up for um, for an arbor for an arboreal tarantula. This is the piece that I am thinking about really focusing on as like the main back piece and then building around this arboreal tarantulas especially as slings want to have something like this where they can get behind it and it is against the wall of the enclosure it helps them feel safe obviously there is no substrate in here right now but i'm thinking something like that to start and then we just go from there so this is where I'm starting and now let's just do the rest of it to start we're gonna put in a little bit of our substrate the substrate is a mix of cocoa core organic topsoil clay sand, uh, wrapped a chip, and um, some other bark, just to give it a nice, like, you know, variety. This is an arboreal species. That is all the substrate that I'm going to put in there, because the rest of it we're going to fill with plants and sticks and all of that. This spider would naturally not be in the substrate. If all you give it is substrate, it's going to use the substrate. For example, this is what it lives in right now. This is fine for the size it was, and it's gotten bigger, and now we can move it up. But this is, obviously you can see what it's done is it's made tunnels, and it's moved its dirt around. And now it'll be going in something like this. And as we set it up more, you'll see kind of how it comes together. All right, so I have the first one done. It is nothing super fancy. You can see that this is just like some leaves back here for it. And this is it. This will make a nice house for him or her. And they will be able to enjoy this. We didn't use any glue, so we are actually going to do the rehouse for this one just right now. We're going to get this one out of the way. I am going to videotape this the best I can, but I'm going to be honest with you. My priority is getting the animal into its enclosure. I have some tools that I use. We have a little paintbrush. We have a baby spoon. Important that it is for the babies because it is soft. And I have some tweezers. Three things I like to have close by when I'm doing a rehouse. 
I also have this bin. This bin is what I'm going to dump the contents of that container into, and then I am going to immediately close it. I give it a second. I let whatever is in there chill out. Now, if I see when I open it that the animal is right on top, I'm gonna gently just scoot it into its enclosure. You wanna make sure that you have your lid for the enclosure close by, you're ready. You know, this is a quick process. This is something that is not, you know, we're not lollygagging doing this. We're doing it and we're doing it quick because it can go wrong if you don't do it quickly. But enough talking. Let's just get to work. When I look at it, I like to get an idea of where he is. You may not be able to see him, but he's right here. So I am going to just gently open it and get an idea of where he's at. I don't see him right here. He is being, he or she is being very cooperative with me. So I'm going to gently kind of put the lid on here so that I know he's not gonna get out. I'm gonna close this up because I don't need it anymore. I have the house and I have my paintbrush and I have the lid right here. So I'm going to dress. I can see his little legs. And I apologize if this angle is not that great. I'm gonna be honest, I'm more worried about you doing this correctly. And this baby went right in there so easy. I love it. So that was probably the most polite tarantula rehouse that I have done in a very long time. Um, obviously, this tarantula knew that it was on camera. When I do a rehouse, I, I'm just gonna give them a nice little spray of water. I did rehydrate the substrate pretty good before I put it in there so it wouldn't be dry. And then we just put the lid on. And then, and that's it. That went so easy. They don't always go like that, but I'm gonna be honest, more times than not, they do go like that. And now, look, sorry about that. Look how cute this little enclosure is. Looks great. And now I put them somewhere quiet and dark just to acclimate and I don't feed them for a couple days after I rehouse them. But I have one done. Now let's build the other enclosures. All right, I have some stuff picked out for the jumping spider. I am first going to use these little bamboo thingies. I guess little pieces of bamboo that were cut and dried. I'm gonna attach some magnets to them to attach them to the sides of the thing. So I'll show you that as I do it. I am doing like a tiki bar theme, so I have attached the magnet to the back of that, to the back of three of these little things, and this. While you are, and like this too, while you are setting these up, 
just be creative. Enjoy yourself. There isn't a right way or a wrong way to do it as long as you're using things that are safe for aquariums. All of these little figurey things, I just wash with Dawn dish soap and water. Same with the plants. And these were already dried and they're safe for birds and birds are arguably the most sensitive. So if they're safe for birds, they're safe for my jumping spider. But yeah, and then this will live this way. But let's go ahead and put it together. I am gonna time lapse that for you. When there's moss glued to the bottom. I think that that is so silly. These spiders poop so much. It is so hard to clean. I just leave it like this. I like it like this. It's clean. Those two items can just be easily removed and then everything else in here can also be easily removed so that the whole thing can be cleaned. And yeah, this is it. It didn't take me all that long to do, but I obviously I had a lot of this stuff and I, are, and I already had you know, the basic skill set I needed to know how to do this. If you're just learning, it might take you a little bit longer. But yeah, that is all. And I am going to let everything in here dry for a day before I put it back in. And then I will show you tomorrow or maybe the next day, me putting the spider into the enclosure. But yeah, this is our really cute enclosure for our drumming spider. All right, it is a couple days later and we are going to go ahead and rehouse Minx, my girl, into her enclosure. I have it on its side so that it is easy to put her in there just because when you start having things attached into there with the magnets, it can get heavy. So I just have it on its side like this. This is the bottom, so I'll just slide it on there. And then uh, to get her in there, I'll just use a little paintbrush. She's made her house right on the top, so it should be pretty easy to do. about the mantis that we are using um, that we're gonna put away in here this is just a gift that was given to me from a friend so I don't know a whole lot about mantises I do know that a lot of the mantises I don't think we're supposed to have in Florida but I'm gonna go with that this is a native mantis because there's a couple that are native and that it looks like some of the native ones that I see so we're gonna just that checks out for me if it checks out for you but I have this little container that I put some dirt in and then let's get into it. I think that that's perfect. 
and I didn't glue anything in, so we can go ahead and put our friend right in there. Just a little guy. For this one, all I really think I'm gonna need is a paintbrush. I hope that after watching that, you have a little bit more confidence in your tarantula or invert rehousing abilities. If you're already a professional, then thanks for watching anyways. But I hope you have a great night or day or whatever time of day it is for you. If you have any animals at home, give them some love for me and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.